Beneath the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean, where silence stretches beyond the horizon, the Earth is alive. Welcome to Mateo Foco, where we uncover the hidden rhythms of our planet, from the quiet tremor beneath the sea to the forces that shape continents. Today, we journey to one of the most haunting and restless places on Earth, the island of Iwo To, once known to the world as Iwo Jima. It lies more than a thousand kilometers south of Tokyo, a small volcanic island no larger than a city district. To most, it is a name remembered through history books and grainy black and white photographs. So, it was here in 1945 that the Pacific War reached one of its bloodiest chapters. On the slopes of Mount Suribachi, soldiers fought, fell, and raised a flag that would become an enduring symbol of human struggle. For decades, the island seemed silent, a memorial adrift in the ocean, preserved in memory and time. But the earth does not forget. Beneath the black sands and relics of war, Iwoto has never stopped moving. The island sits upon the Izubonin volcanic arc, part of the immense Pacific Ring of Fire, a zone that circles the ocean like a scar. Here, the crust of the earth bends and fractures under the weight of moving plates. It is a place where land is born, where the ocean floor melts and rises, where islands appear and vanish within the span of centuries. For years, Iwoto exhaled small breaths of gas and steam, quiet reminders that magma slept below. Scientists watched, measured, and waited. Then, on the morning of September 2nd, 2025, the waiting ended. At dawn, a deep rumble echoed beneath the island. Moments later, a violent explosion shattered the stillness. Witnesses described the sound as a roar from the center of the earth. A column of white steam and gray ash shot upward, twisting into the wind. It seemed like a single eruption, but within minutes, the ground split in several directions. Five enormous craters tore open almost simultaneously. Five wounds in the land through which the earth began to breathe fire again. These were not rivers of glowing lava, but explosions of steam and rock. Scientists call them phreatic eruptions, violent bursts caused when rising magma heats underground water so rapidly that it flashes into steam. The trapped vapor expands with explosive force, blasting open the rock above it. It is one of nature's most unpredictable processes and one of the most dangerous because there is almost no warning. Each crater told a story of pressure and release. The smallest was about 35 meters wide, the length of a city bus route. The largest stretched nearly 150 meters across, wide enough to swallow an entire football field. The energy needed to carve such openings equals hundreds of tons of explosives detonating at once. What truly astonished scientists was not only the violence, but the precision. The craters formed along two geological faults, clear lines of weakness in the island's crust. It was as if the earth had followed an invisible pattern, 
releasing its fury along pathways written millions of years ago. Fragments of incandescent rock rained down across the island. Early analysis showed they were trachyte, a silica-rich volcanic rock that forms when magma lingers and cools slowly beneath the surface. Its presence meant something important. Magma was close, perhaps only a few dozen meters below the ground. This was not a superficial event. The island's heart was stirring. By evening, the eruption had transformed the landscape. Nearly 200,000 square meters of ground were blanketed with fresh ash and shattered stone. Yet, amid the destruction came something extraordinary. One of the western craters erupted so violently that it forced new land up from the sea. More than 25,000 square meters of new surface emerged from the ocean, a raw, steaming extension of the island. In a single day, Iwoto had grown larger. The earth was remaking itself. For those who understand geology, such growth is not merely spectacular, it is deeply revealing. It means that magma is rising from below, displacing the surface and adding mass to the crust. And as the surface rises, so too does the entire island. Instruments placed by Japan's meteorological agency recorded something unprecedented, uplift. The ground of Iwato was rising nearly 10 centimeters each day, a vertical motion so rapid that even satellites detected it. The entire island, weighing billions of tons, was slowly lifting toward the sky. This was no random movement. It was the signature of a massive body of magma accumulating beneath the surface. Days later, the rate of uplift slowed, from 10 centimeters to five, then to half a centimeter per day. To the untrained eye, that looked like relief, as though the island were settling back into rest. But volcanologists knew the truth could be far more complex. A drop in uplift might mean the magma had stopped pushing upward, or it might mean that it had found a new path, deeper or farther from the instrument's reach. Since measurements began decades ago, Iwoto has risen more than 20 meters above its wartime level. The beaches where soldiers once fought are now cliffs towering over the sea. The geography that shaped a historic battle has transformed into something entirely new. It is as though the earth itself has reclaimed the field, reshaping it in silence. Beneath the island lies the explanation, a resurgent caldera. Long ago, a massive volcanic system beneath Iwoto collapsed inward, leaving behind a vast chamber of molten rock. Over centuries, that chamber has slowly refilled pushing the island upward like the lid of a pressure vessel. Each eruption, each quake, is a whisper from that chamber, a reminder that the system is still alive. Since 2021, activity has intensified. Minor eruptions have become frequent. Gas emissions have increased. Each event has been stronger than the last. The eruption of September 25th was the most powerful of the century on this island, a warning that the system beneath may be building toward something larger. Though officially classified as moderate on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, the event was anything but ordinary. It forced Japan's self-defense forces to cancel all scheduled operations on the island. Military aircraft were redirected and personnel evacuated. For the first time in years, Iwoto was considered unsafe for human presence. Scientists now monitor it from afar, satellites, sensors, and observation ships collecting data day and night. The island, though small, has become one of the most studied pieces of land in the Pacific. Every tremor, every rise in temperature, every plume of gas carries meaning. The study of Iwoto reveals not only local danger, but a window into how the Earth works. 
It shows how magma chambers refill and release, how crust bends and reforms, how new land is born. What happens beneath this small island echoes across the Pacific, part of the same chain of events that created Japan itself. For Japan, this is more than science. It is heritage and necessity. Few nations live so closely with the forces of nature. From earthquakes to tsunamis, from typhoons to volcanoes, the Japanese archipelago stands upon the meeting point of moving worlds. Preparedness is not just policy, it is identity. Every eruption like Iwoto's teaches lessons, refines systems, and reminds the country that vigilance is survival. As days turn into weeks, the island settles once more into uneasy calm. Steam still rises from cracks in the ground. The smell of sulfur drifts with the wind. Life returns, seabirds nest, waves lap against the new shoreline. But beneath the surface, the story continues. The magma remains, the pressure builds. To walk upon Iwato is to stand on a living creature. The soil is warm. The air vibrates faintly. The ground itself is breathing. Each rise of the land, each subtle tremor, is a heartbeat. It reminds us that the planet is not still, that beneath our feet lies an engine older than life itself. Iwoto is both a memorial and a prophecy. It carries the memory of human conflict and the evidence of Earth's endless creation. Where once men fought for control, the planet now writes its own future, reshaping the same ground in fire and ash. The island continues to rise. Someday, perhaps years or decades from now, it will erupt again. And when it does, it will remind us not of destruction, but of renewal. Because that is what the earth does. It destroys, it creates, it endures. It moves in silence, shaping worlds, raising islands, erasing history, and beginning again. And as long as we listen, as long as we watch the signs, we will continue to understand the language of this living world. This is Mateo Foco, where we witness the power of the planet, one awakening at a time.